the truth will set you free. We are speaking of the truth, which the Bible says that Jesus is the truth, the life, and the way, and that no man comes to him except by the Father. Now, he didn't say that you can come through Mary. He didn't say that you can come through a saint. He didn't say none of those things. He said, no man can come up to me except through Jesus, for he is the only mediator between God and man. The problem with mankind, I should say, or a, a lot of people is this. They take the part of the word that they want and they leave the rest out. Now, you cannot believe within your heart that God is a person that sits there like this and wants to hear you mumble. Does he want to hear you pray like this? Our Father, what in heaven, hallowed be thy name, Hail Mary, full of grace, Does he want to hear that? But what he's hearing is. Because you're saying as fast as you can because you have a lot of beans to go through. Now, I'm not cutting a Catholic. Believe me, there are so many Catholics that truly love the Lord. My grandfather was one of them. He loved Jesus so much. He didn't understand what we understand in the word. He didn't understand anything. In his generation, he was told that only the priests could interpret the word of God. Only the priests could read it. That It was a sin to take the Bible and to read it. I know that my mother was told that, and it really affected her mind as sick as she was. But I want you to know, he also says in Isaiah that you take a tree and you cut it down and you form it into an image and then you bow to it and it is as dead as you are. I mean, I preached that not knowing the person that I was preaching to was Catholic and all I did was read a couple of the scriptures and he was a, a devout Catholic all his life and when he saw for himself the, the truth he completely repented and turned away from any religion. He went to Jesus, which is salvation, because we're not a, Jesus is not a religion. He tells you in James what a true religion is. It's visiting the father, fatherless and the widows. It's, it's doing works, good works. But that's religion. You don't get saved by good works. You get saved by the grace of God. For God the Father was up in, is up in heaven and he chose Jesus Christ. He chose you to follow Jesus Christ. I'm not saying he chose his son, Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ was his only begotten son. I am saying that he chose you to follow his son. Because there are many people on this earth that do not believe that Jesus Christ is the son of God. Therefore, they, are, they aren't called by God, or they haven't been called yet. But it is God the Father that calls them. And it is Jesus Christ who left a book of instruction, which is the New Testament. You know, there's a lot of places in, in the New Testament and the Gospel where Jesus' own words said, You have heard that it is said that eye for an eye and a tooth for tooth. But I say unto you, which means he changed it. He changed it into love. Bless those that persecute you and pray for those who despitefully use you so that you may be perfect as your father in heaven is perfect. For forgiveness is forgetting. Forgiveness is the thing that we all must do. We must forget what's been done to us. I mean, what we've been through, what we think we have, what we don't think we have. We have to let all of those things go. And we have to give them to God. That's how God captivates our, our thoughts and our minds. He literally, like I was teaching about 
<clears throat> journal journaling and how you sit down and talk to God and ask him to reveal to you what your thoughts and feelings are and where they came from and how to overcome them and how to get them ushered out of your heart, out of your mind, out of your emotions, out of your feelings, that you die to yourself. Because if all of your lifetime you've been only taught one thing and then you you finally one day you come to a place where you realize that can't possibly be true because is God the kind of God that would expect you to, you know, before I found Jesus Christ, I was tormented, so tormented in so many different ways because of my background in the places I came from, the the witchcraft in my grandmother, the, uh, the Catholicism in my mother and, and all of these things. And, and it was, terrible. The things I saw and the things I felt made me suicidal. And so I took the rosary to my heart and started going, oh, Father, what in heaven, hallowed be I, but that, 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 until it became nothing. And suddenly the Lord came to me and said my name. God, the Father himself came to me and said, Marian, listen to what you are praying. Our Father art in heaven. I am your father and I am in heaven and I am holy. Now he came to me like this very often because he, I had a mountain of troubles and problems in my heart and mind. Mountains of problems all around me. I had so many problems. I used to tell people if I had an artificial plant, it would have died because my problems set problems upon problems. Some of them were very terrorizing. Some were very awful. The things that I had gone through were horrible. No human being should go through some of the things that I had been through. Not nobody. But yet there I was going through them all as a very young person. So God began to speak to me when I was like 27. I was filled with suicide. That's all I could think of. I, I, uh, I had panic attacks where the, the terror, the panic and fear would consume me from head to toe and I could feel the fear on my tongue and it would cause me unreasonably to jump up and run screaming down the main street at the top of my lungs because I was so terrorized and so fearful. And the first time God came to me and touched me with peace, I was so used to fear. I didn't realize fear was my best friend because as long as I was afraid, I knew I was alive and breathing. But when peace touched me, I was positive I was dying. And I would just jump up and run and scream. And God had to slowly, very slowly, take a hold of me and love on me. And I mean, it took him a couple of years of loving me and leading me and guiding me out of the maze of my mind, teaching me things about what I was seeing and feeling. And through those times, he would lead me up to a place where I could accept Jesus Christ. Because at that time, I was 31 years old and I did not understand what the Bible was. I had no idea. So how could I read some something or fall in love with someone I never knew? And when I finally did get a Bible, it was because I had a vision of the crystal sea and someone told me it was a Bible. And I told him, get me one. Being 31 and living through living hell every day of your mind with torment so great and so horrible that it was unbelievable. And so fear had a hold of me so greatly that I had to sit in a room with my back up against something and I couldn't have a window or a door behind me. And I couldn't lay on the couch with my back to the room. I had to lay on the couch with my back to the back of the couch. And I can remember not knowing anything about the Word of God. And suddenly the most powerful beautiful, phenomenal wing just went 
right over me. And a peace came on me that was unbelievable. And as I laid there comforted and cuddled in his, under his wing, I did not even know that I had my back to the room. I was not aware of anything but his love. That was his love showing me that he was covering me with his wing. And I heard a noise behind me and I turned around and I saw this huge demon that had had me all of my life till I was 31, all of my life. I was afraid of everything, you name it, I was afraid of it. And he had me. And when I looked at that demon, I went, ah, oh, it's you. And I turned my back on him and cuddled up next to Jesus under the shadow of God's wing. And I'm going to tell you what, I didn't know it was Jesus then. I didn't know what I was doing. I didn't understand it. I understand it now. I understand that my heart broke fellowship with that fear that I had made a decision not to be afraid anymore. That that decision through the comfort of the Holy Spirit through God the Father, was so comforting to me that I did not need the fear to know that I was alive anymore. And so therefore, it was phenomenal and it was wonderful. And because my mind was so far gone, like I told you, I would get in catatonic states or I would get to the places where I would be insane. And here he would speak to me with that sweet, small, still voice and say, I am your father and I made the universe. I made everything and I am your father. And it was two years later that I finally got a vision on the crystal sea and I asked for a Bible. And when I got into the Bible, even though I had gone to, and, and it was only once in a while because my my father would tell me that he would beat me if I didn't go to catechism. And catechism was where they took the, the one uh, Ten Commandments and they split the one in half and just discarded the one that says, don't make any graven images. And in the woman that gave me the Bible, she told me how in Catholic school, how she had to go and bow down and kiss the feet of Mary. Now, these these things are dead. They're not alive. There's no feeling there. There's no love there. They can't help you. I've had a woman that even just recently came out of Catholicism, and she believes she is just so close to God because God come and went like this with her hugged her like that. That's how he, she still has those old thoughts in her brain. Doesn't realize how real Jesus is. When I, when I found, had my, uh, my biopsies of cancer, that I was going to die any day, Jesus took a hold of me and held me in his arms and just told me, don't be concerned. I am healed. You know, he, I love you. And I'm here for you. And that is totally different. It was just like a person standing right there with you and me, holding me, hugging me the way I needed, the way I needed somebody to tell me. I needed a father. I needed a brother. I need someone to say, you're going to be all right. You're not going to die the way the doctors said they're going to die. It's all going to be all right. I had never been held by my father. I had never been loved like that. And I was married to an alcoholic at the time. And so I never had anything. I was by myself 24-7 going out of my mind. And nobody, would you believe nobody showed me any love or any understanding or ever said, Marion, I will pray for you. So I made up my mind when I found Jesus. He was the only man in my life that ever loved me. Listen to what I'm telling you. He's the only man in your life that ever loved you. Those of you that are men that have had tyrants for fathers. Men that, that have had, have grown now. 
and missed that part of life of having a real father. Those that are women that are grown now and miss that part of having a father hold them and tell them everything is going to be all right. Inside of you is a little girl and a little boy that wants to be held, that wants to be loved. That's what God made us. That's how he made us. So that's why he calls us children. That's why the Holy Spirit is a comforter. He wants to put his arms around you and he wants to tell you. But in just so doing, he wants you to love him so much, you would never want to do one thing to offend him. Never want to do anything against his, his word against him. And I'm not talking about following it to the leather, letter, to the legalism of part of it. I'm talking about the things of the heart, the things of your relationship between him and how he can talk to you and how he can say, don't go that way. It's not me. Because he doesn't want to slap you in the face. He won't act like that. He's not like that. Your father may have done that. Your earthly father. You know, I was punched in the mouth when I, when I was 18 years old. And I, I couldn't leave work because the, uh, the, the manager was so mean, he would not let me eat, go just walk a few blocks because I lived on the main street where the store was that I worked at. He would not let me walk to my home to get anything to eat. He forced me that if I got hungry, and I worked very hard, if I got hungry, he forced me to buy my food there. And I had to for lunch. And when I got home and my father, who took always took my money, never ever did not take it all and then he would he would just scream i spent this amount for lunch it was very little and all i said was but dad and that's all i got out of my mouth and he just hit me right across the face with one of the store managers it was my friend it came one of the assistant manager but i'm saying I wasn't allowed to ever speak that whole time. I was stifled. I couldn't express, hey, this hurts. I couldn't say, hey. And I kept it all inside until it drove me crazy. I kept all the things and the nightmares that I saw and lived inside. And the only one that could come and heal you today because you're keeping that inside. You're holding that inside. Let go of it and give it to Jesus. Let go of it and let him take care of you and love you. Understand he's not out because he hates the people that are doing this with you. He wills that all men be saved, not just one, not just just those that, that know how to treat you good. If you could only realize that those who are being cruel to you don't have any idea they're doing it. They're probably just as much a victim of life as you are. If you could only see and understand the way he sees it, the way he understands it, how much his love that runs so deep. And he loved on me. And when I found Jesus, I got into Matthew 27, and I fell in love with the man that loved me. I fell in love with all the things that I seen him do with others. I fell in love with all the ways and all the things he said. And I determined with all of my heart that I would never do one thing to offend him. But because I am human, I fell many times. And each time I fell, I failed. I wanted to get down and just die because I couldn't bear it. And you know what he would do? He would say, Marion. I understand why you are the way you are. I know why. And his love would be so great. It would go beyond all of my faults. And give me the grace to make sure I never would offend him. If you could know that God. If you could allow him to love on you that way. If you could see and understand how much he loves you. 
all the things that I've ever said and done would be worth everything that I've ever been through. If you could see, if I could take it and put it into your heart, and you can see that all the times you hurt, that he knows he's there. He won't ever leave you, forsake you. He's carrying you even now, because I know many of you are hurting. Many of you are in terrible ways, but God has the power to lift you out of it. But you must trust in the power of his name. You must trust in the power of his blood. You must trust in the power of him being able to move mountains. You must trust in him in spite of everything that you have ever been through. You must believe on him. And even when you find yourself in unbelief, even when you find yourself falling down, understand he doesn't want you beating up yourself because you made a mistake. He wants you to go on. He wants you to ask him for forgiveness and go on. Understand him, how he is, and how kind and loving he is at all times. He never changes. He is always that way.